Hi guys, so this is our small intestine. Today I'll be talking about the small intestine and as well as the large intestine. So one thing to always ensure and note is the origin of these organs or these structures. Right, the four gut give rise to the esophagus, to the stomach, up to the second part of duodenum where the bowel duct enters the second part of duodenum. The mid gut give rise to the lower part of duodenum transverse colon, small intestine, and duodenum, while the iron gut give rise to the left one-third of transverse colon, descending colon, sigmoid colon, rectum, and anal canal, upper part of anal canal. So this is our small intestine. The first thing to do is to identify each part. Yes, yeah, so this here is our cecum, as you can see. This here is our cecum. Is our cecum and how do I identify my cecum? The presence of our appendix. So this year, this year is our appendix, and our appendix position is retrocecal. Oftentimes, the base of the appendix can be pinned, and you can be asked the region it is found or the location, and it is found at the McBurney's point. A McBurney's point is a lateral one third, and the medial, the junction between the lateral one third and the medial two thirds of the line joining the anterior superior iliac spine and the umbilicus. So this point here is the magbonic point. Yeah, it's, and this is our cecum. Then going upward, we have our ascending colon. This is our ascending colon. This is our right colic flexure, as we can see. This is our right colic flexure, and this is also called hepatic flexure because it is related to the liver. Then we have our transverse colon. I don't have the complete section, but this is our transverse colon. Then completing it, we have our descending colon. But before the descending colon, we have our left colic flexure, also known as the splenic flexure. So we have descending colon, sigmoid colon, rectum, and inner canal. How to identify these structures when we see them? So this is our cecum, ascending colon, hepatic flexure, transverse colon, um, splenic flexure descending colon, zygmoid colon, rectum and anal canal. So this structure right here that I'm holding on to, this is our greater omentum. And how does it attach? It attaches from the greater curvature of the stomach, goes downward and flanks back upwards, come and attach on the transverse mesocolon. So this is our greater omentum. And it's also referred to as the policeman of the abdomen because it helps to attack infection, inflammations of the stomach or the abdomen generally. Then this is our small intestine, this is our large intestine. How do we identify or differentiate the small from the large intestine? Well, this is small intestine, as you can see. It is smaller from the name, basically. It is smaller, while the large intestine is larger. But apart from that, we have three structures that are specific to large intestine that are not present in small intestine. And these three structures are presence of circulation, presence of tinea coli, and presence of appendix epipoike. So this, all this um, somewhat curvature that we are seeing, more like you, are, you tie a rubber band around the structure, all this st structure that we are seeing is our circulation, all these things. Then our tinea coli, this here, this structure here, is our tinea coli. So we have our circulation, tinea coli, and our circulations, all these structures, our tinea coli, this is our tinea coli, and our appendix epiproike. These fat-like um, sacs are our appendix epiproike, and there are specific features of the large intestine. Yeah, so that's our large intestine. Then the next thing to identify is our small intestine. The small intestine has three parts. We have our duodenum, we have our ileum, and we have our jejunium. But in order, we have duodenum, jejunium, and ileum. So starting with the duodenum, which is 25 centimeters, our jejunium, and our ileum. The whole of jejunium and ileum make up six meters. So the whole of jejunium and ileum is six meters. The duodenum is just 25 centimeters, right? So this year, this year is our duodenum. This year is our duodenum. And how do I identify the duodenum? It continues from the pylorus of the stomach. So this is our pylorus. This part is often pinned or painted or probed. It's tipu chases and 
you are asked what it is, this is our pylorus of the stoma because of the presence of pyloric sphincter. So we can see this thickening part, right? This is the pyloric sphincter of the stomach. So it continues downwards as a duodenum. Our duodenum is a C-shaped structure of the small intestine. So we can see our letter C. And sometimes you can be asked to you can be asked in simple chest question that the second part of duodenum contains what part of the pancreas? It contains the head and ostinate process of the pancreas. So the duodenum has four parts. We have the superior or first part, we have the second part or descending part, we have the third horizontal part, and we have the fourth or ascending part. So this is our pylorus, then this portion is our superior part, this portion is our descending or second part, then our third part is horizontal, our third part is horizontal, then the fourth part is just very short, the shortest actually, and it's continuous, it's continuous with the jejunium. So the fourth part is somewhere about here, first part, second part, third part, and fourth part. So this is our duodenal jejunal flexure, that is the joint between, the junction between the jejunium and the duodenum. So from this point here, we have our duodenal jejunium. From this point here, we have our jejunium going downwards, going downwards. So, and points to note, probably the meter or the length rather of the of each part of the duodenum, whether in inches or in centimeter, whichever one suits you, it is often asked in steeple chases. So this, that is that our first part or superior part is two inch long. The third part, oh, the second part is three inch long. The third part is four inch long, and the fourth part is one inch long. Again, first part is two inch long. Second part is three inch long. Third part is four inch long and fourth part is one inch long. Then this is our jejunium. Jejun um, then going downwards, we have our ilium. So how do we differentiate our jejunium from the ilium? As you can see, although we cannot really see the texture or feel the texture, but we can see that this structure here is somewhat thick. However, this one is somewhat collapsed. It's not as thick as this one. So this is our ilium. The walls are thinner. And this is our jejunium. The walls are thicker. Apart from that, in case you are not able to use that one to identify, because there are some bodies that both walls be thin and, you know, collapse. However, you can also make use of the, um, the fat to identify which one is ilium and which one is jejunium. So as you can see, this part now is not as yellow i'm going to use yellow to, um, to represent the fat because our fat in this case is yellow we can see yellow color so the fat is not really obvious in this region however the fat is very prominent and obvious in this region so this side that has the fat showing very well is our ilium however the part that is not showing the fat properly is our jejunium so the jejunium has windows and less fat while the ilium has no windows and more fat. Yes, this area can be painted. This is our, and you can be asked what it is called, this structure that I'm holding on to. And this is our messenger of the small intestine. It, it is pinned around this area. It is the the messenger of the small intestine. And if it is pinned around this area, it is the root of the messenger of the small intestine. This is the root, and this is the old messenger. The old messenger is six to seven meters long, while the root is just 15 centimeters long. Yes. So apart from the fat, you can also use the vesa recta, an arterial arcade to differentiate between the jejunium and the ilium. So as we can see this portion, this portion, not really prominent though, but in the jejunium, we have few arterial arcades and long vesa recta. So not really prominent, but this, we can see that the vesa recta is long and the arterial arcades are few. They are not as many as ilium. However, in ilium, also not prominent at all because of the fat. I cannot even see anyone. But the ilium has short vesa recta. Okay, I've seen one. The ilium has short vesa recta. It is short and there are many arterial arcades. Short vesa recta, many arterial arcades is ilium. Long vesa recta, few arterial arcades is jejunium. Or any area around the transverse colon, yes, around the transverse colon. 
can be pinned. Can, can we see these um, vessels here, all these darkened structure, these vessels? And you can be asked what vessels they are. They are called the marginal artery of drum wood. Of drum mood. So they are called the marginal arteries. Just simply put marginal vessels, vessels, because you cannot specify between vein and artery, right? So marginal vessels or marginal artery and vein, right? So it is safer to actually write marginal artery and vein. So that is all for the small intestine. As you can see, note the position of the appendix. It is retrocecal in position, occurs in 65% of people. And note the position of the root. It is, it is located at the McBurney's point. The cecum, the cecum, the ascending colon, hepatic flexure, transverse colon, splenic flexure, descending colon, and sigmoid colon rectum and inner canal. Then we have greater momentum. Again, we have three things that we can use to identify our large intestine. They are the circulations, we have our tinea coli, and this is our tinea coli right here, this structure here is our tinea coli. This structure right here is our tinea coli. And this third one is our appendix epiploike. So this structure here is our appendix epiploike. Our large, our large intestine is larger than the small intestine. The small intestine does not have those three things. It does not have tinea coli, it does not have appendix epiploike, and does not have circulations. And the small intestine, we have three parts, jejunium, duodenum, and ileum. But in the other, we have duodenum first, jejunium, and ileum third. So the duodenum is the C-shape, which in which the second part surrounds the head of the pancreas and the ucinate process. The jejunium is the next part, and it has lesser fat and windows. The root has lesser fat and windows. The arterial arcades are few and the vessel recta are longer. The ileum, the root has more fat, the arterial arcades are more, and the vessel recta are short. So this is all for the small intestine. Bye!